The Flick Picks Top 10 Movies of 2014. All right, so 2014 has come and gone. It was a magical and mystical year. There was a lot of good movies and a lot of shitty movies, but in this video, we're talking about the good movies. Warning, these are my personal top 10 picks of 2014. You might hate all these movies, and that's okay because we're still friends at the end of the video, but all film is subjective. On a technical standpoint, these might not all be technically the best movies of 2014, but these are the top 10 movies I enjoyed the most. Okay, so before we dive into my top 10 list, I first wanted to mention my one honorable mention of 2014, and that is going to go to Birdman. Man. Yes, I thought Birdman was a phenomenal movie. I enjoyed a lot of the aspects about this film. Michael Keaton, I've always been a fan of Michael Keaton. Beetlejuice, Mr. Mom, Batman. I don't need to say anything else. Michael Keaton is the man. And the film Birdman was probably one of the most innovative films of 2014. Really enjoyed the movie. If I had a top 11 list, it would have been number 11. But I don't because top 11 just doesn't sound as cool and as epic as top 10. So yeah, that's why it's my honorable mention. All right, let's dive into this shit. Look, pick, like, movie. Yeah, the first movie up on my top 10 list is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Long title, phenomenal movie. Andy Serkis is the mocap CGI Caesar, phenomenal. And in retrospective, I think I enjoy Rise of the Planet of the Apes just a little bit more. I don't know why, maybe I'm a huge fan of James Franco. That's my James Franco impression, and with that said, let's go to number nine. Ideas are peaceful, history is violent. One of the best lines given by Brad Pitt in the movie Fury. And when it comes to the movie Fury, I really wasn't expecting much going into this movie. It came out in the fall time. I was like, yeah, it could be okay. It's directed by David Ayer, who's directing the upcoming Suicide Squad movie. Can't wait to see that shit. And when I went into the theater, I got immersed into this World War II setting. It was brutal, it was violent, and the camaraderie between these soldiers that live in this tank it was just, it kind of pulled your heartstrings a little bit, and then you see shit blowing up, bodies flying, and you're just like, yeah, war sucks, and this movie's awesome. The next movie up is Gone Girl, starring Ben the Batman Affleck. I've always been a huge fan of Ben Affleck, even when he made a lot of shitty movies. I hated the movies, but I still liked Ben Affleck. He just seems like a cool dude. You want to go to like a Boston pub and drink with him, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm leaving this whole town in my rear view mirror. That's my Ben Affleck impression. It's awful. And the movie is a crime mystery drama thriller movie, and it's one of those movies that always holds the suspense of the audience. You might think you know where it's going, but it always changes up things. Now, I do have a few complaints about the movie very quickly. The, the last few scenes in the movie just didn't make any logical sense to me, but everything else before that was phenomenal, and I really enjoyed the movie. Just the concept of being accused of murdering your wife. It just feels like something that's going to happen to me one day. That got very dark very quick. Let's just go to the next movie. Don't call the cops. Anyway, the next movie up is Interstellar, directed by Christopher Nolan. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, you might have heard me say this a few times, Interstellar was my most anticipated movie of 2014. And with all that said, does that mean I geeked out and fanboyed just because it was a Christopher Nolan movie and said it was the best movie ever made? Well, no, I had some complaints with the movie. Was it everything I wanted it to be? Not quite. Was it as good as I expected it to be? Not quite. It was a little bit different and totally changed up throughout the movie to things I didn't expect it to do. But with all that said, I really enjoyed the movie because every time this movie took you into space, I just felt like a little tiny speck in the galaxy and it just gave me little shivers. It made my nips hard and I was like, yeah, I'm in space with Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, and shit's getting crazy. I really enjoyed this movie. <laughs> Did I just say my nips were getting hard? Uh, yeah, that's the best way I can describe this movie. Interstellar will make your nips hard. But yeah, the movie Interstellar. It's one of those movies I want to pick up on Blu-ray on day number one, bring home, crank up the surround sound, and watch it on my plasma screen TV and just get immersed back into the movie. The next one up is Captain America, the Winter Soldier, the most patriotic badass in the Marvel Galaxy. Now, as far as the movie Captain America, the Winter Soldier goes, it felt like a real movie. I mean, yeah, it got comic booky at times, but at other times it felt like a real spy espionage movie with the guy who's all jacked up on super soldier serum. Yeah, that's called steroids. I'm all jacked up on caffeine right now. I gotta calm down. Anyway, ever since the opening shot in Captain America the Winter Soldier, when he dives into the ocean, he gets on that ship, he's running across the deck, kicking everyone's ass, throwing the shield, it's bouncing off everything. I was like, yeah, this is the Captain America I want to see. And plus, on a side note, any movie that features Scarlett Johansson in a tight black leather jumpsuit, yeah, that's also enjoyable to look at.
Edge of Tomorrow starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. And don't worry, we're going to talk about Emily Blunt in just a few seconds. Oh my god, don't you ever get off that floor, Emily. Just keep trying, and I'll keep watching. Now the film Edge of Tomorrow is probably one of the most pleasant surprises I had in the theater all year. Yeah, the other pleasant surprise I had was when I looked down and I found $20. And then I picked it up and it was covered in goo and gum. But I still kept it. And going into this movie, I really wasn't expecting much. Because the marketing team behind this movie, well, they basically had their heads up their asses. Yeah, because all the trailers for this movie looked mediocre and underwhelming. And they didn't capitalize on what this movie was all about. It was a great sci-fi action drama film. And they didn't showcase any of that. And by the way, when the movie did finally come out on Blu-ray... They didn't even know what they wanted to call the fucking movie. They're like, uh, do we call it Edge of Tomorrow? No, let's call it Live, Die, Repeat. Is that okay with everybody? Are you talking to me, bub? The next movie up is X-Men Days of Future Past. And as I talk about this movie, I'm going to tightly grip my Wolverine action figure. Why? Because it makes me feel safe and secure. Okay, so coming in at number four is X-Men Days of Future Past, and Brian Singer came back to direct this new installment of the X-Men movies. Now, this is a good thing, and I'm going to tell you why. They basically did everything that they could in their power, creatively, to erase the mistakes against humanity known as X-Men 3, The Last Stand. Now, a few reasons I really enjoyed X-Men Days of Future Past, and the reason it's my favorite X-Men movie to date, is it wasn't just a Wolverine movie and the gang. It showcased all the different characters, it gave them their own storylines, their own moments, and I also really enjoyed the time travel aspect of the movie, and we finally got to see Sentinels. Yeah, for that we give it two thumbs up. Let's go to the next movie. Now, a few minutes ago, I said Captain America the Winter Soldier was probably the most serious Marvel film to date. But you want to know what the most fun Marvel film is? It's Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, when you have a tree and a raccoon kicking ass... That just sounds like a fun time. And when Guardians of the Galaxy originally hit theaters, my biggest praise I could give it at the time was this movie made you care about all the characters in the movie within the first 45 minutes. You got to know them, you cared about them, and then you got on with the adventure and the journey. And every single character in this film is likable and they all stand out. They all have their own personalities. You got Groot, you got Rocket, you got Star-Lord, you got Drax, you got Gamora. The next one up is Whiplash, starring Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. Now, when it comes to the movie Whiplash, this is one of those movies that was a limited release, and I looked every day to see if my local theaters were playing this movie. I waited and waited, and then finally, a few weeks ago, it showed up at one of my art house theaters here in my town. I live in Indiana. Yeah, we don't get movies as early as L.A. or New York, but either way, I went to this art house theater instantaneously. The first showing of the very first day it was playing, I went there, there's two people in the theater, one weird guy in a trench coat and some other weird guy they had an afro, but he had like a pair of sunglasses on. He wore them throughout the entire movie. I'm getting off track. What was I saying? Oh yeah, Whiplash. It's a really good movie. Now, I've said this once and I'll say it again. I love great, iconic movie assholes. And J.K. Simmons' character in this movie, Fletcher, plays one of the best assholes I've ever seen on a movie screen. Yeah, if you give a retard a calculator, he'll try to turn on the TV. His character is just filled with great one-liners like that. Okay, now it's time for the epic conclusion of my top 10 best movies of 2014. And that movie is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. So my number one movie of 2014 is Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. And I'm pretty sure the t-shirt gave it away a long time ago. Study hands. Study hands. If you guys want a closer look at this t-shirt or you want to pick one up for yourself, link down below. Now here's why the movie Nightcrawler made my number one movie of the year. Jake Gyllenhaal's performance in this movie as a sociopath who is witty and funny and very intelligent at the same time basically won me over. I love characters like that. For example, take the character of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Christy, don't just look at it. Eat it! I love things like that. And the character of Louis Bloom played by Jake Gyllenhaal in this film was very reminiscent of that. And when you combine those two things together, I just love characters that are sociopaths. I don't know what that says about me. The film Nightcrawler is dark, it's intense, and it shows the seedy underbelly of LA. I love things like that. I love movies that take place at night. But one of my favorite aspects about this film is the dark humor throughout this movie. The name of the company is Video Production News, a professional news gathering service. That is how it should be read, and that is how it should be said. 
One of the best lines given in the movie Nightcrawler, amongst many. Not only is this my favorite movie of 2014, it's the funniest movie of 2014 in my personal opinion. Yeah, I just really love the movie Nightcrawler. Since it's hit theaters, I've seen the movie five times, and I've enjoyed it more every time I've seen it. So anyway guys, that's my top 10 movies of 2014. Now here's my question to you, let me know down below, what was your top 10 favorite movies of 2014? Or what was your favorite movie of 2014? Either way, let me know down below. Thanks for watching guys, and make sure you look out for my top 10 worst movies of 2014 coming very soon. If it's up, I'll put a link right here, boop, or a link down below in the description box. Yeah, look out for that video. It's going to get dark, it's going to get intense, people are going to die. It'll be a fun time. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.